Video games have come a long way since Space Invaders, Atari, Pac-Man, and Tetris. I remember growing up in elementary school and playing the original Nintendo and the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation and then in my teens playing the Xbox and the Xbox 360. For me, it was never too much of an obsession, but there are millions of people who are such hardcore gamers that it is their religion. And this is going to be a very hated video by the majority of the world. It is going to be a video about how overall video games are a tool of Satan. It is going to be a video about the religion of video gaming. If you are a Christian, then you aren't religious. You just have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior. You are going to heaven for that reason. But there are many false religions which lead people to hell. Things like Hinduism, Catholicism, Mormonism, and the list goes on. And the video game religion is no different than these false religions. The video game religion is a bloody religion. If you've read Romans chapter 1, you've seen where it names off a long list of sins. And then in verse 32, it says, Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things, the sins it listed off, are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You can actually have pleasure in someone else sinning. You can have pleasure in watching them commit sin. I believe people have pleasure in watching fictional characters commit sin on a video game. On these open world games like Grand Theft Auto, you can steal cars, kill people, fornicate, run over people, and commit any sin imaginable. God hates sin and he hates evil. And the majority of video games contain content that is contrary to God and his word. In Proverbs chapter 6, it names off six things that the Lord hates. And one of those things is hands that shed innocent blood. It's wrong to commit murder. But what do most of these games involve? They involve bloodshed and murder and war. And I know war is necessary at times in this life, but I don't believe it is meant to be played on a video game. Games like Call of Duty are so realistic with their bloodshed, they are doing nothing but desensitizing the mind to violence. Can a person sit around and play games like Gears of War and Dead Alliance, Dead Rising, Resident Evil... Shadow of War, Uncharted, Ghost Recon, uh, World of Warcraft, and not have their mind desensitized to blood and gore? In Genesis 6.11, one of the reasons God brought the flood in Noah's day was because of violence. Genesis 6.11 says the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. In Matthew 24, Jesus Christ describes the end times and says it will be as it were in the days of Noah. He also said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I believe these video games people are playing are nothing but a future reality of how people will act during that time. And the things they act out in these games will end up being like second nature to them in real life. You can't pump something into your mind 24 hours a day and it not have an effect on you. Video games contain an intense amount of blood and gore. And I believe the devil is using this to desensitize the minds. In the tribulation, men will be able to kill and sacrifice God's people. And it will be nothing for them to do this. Notice that the great whore in Revelation 17 is drunken with the blood of the saints. And most religions are bloody religions. Video gaming is no different. Men love video games because it lets them go into a world where they can do anything they want. There is a do what thou wilt philosophy behind video games. And games like Grand Theft Auto, you can go around and do whatever you want. And that is what the flesh wants. That is what the flesh loves and it desires. And you wish that you could go around in this world and do whatever you want. 
that's what people want deep down. They want to be able to go out and kill who they want to kill, fornicate with who they want to fornicate, commit crimes, and get away with it. But I'd like to also point out that video gaming has a zealous crowd of followers who come together, just like any religion. And just like any religion, they show their religion in their dress. They have books that have cheat codes and instructions on how to practice their religions better in the gamer mags. And just like any religion, they meet together to worship. You can go to a mall or in some storefront and see video gamers gathering together and playing video games together in dark rooms. And when they play online, they play in groups. One of the worst things you can do for your child is let them play an online video game. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. I played video games as a teenager growing up. I played online and the language and perversion you hear from the people you play with is unreal. You're pretty much letting your kid go out with everyone in the world and interact with them. While you're in bed asleep, your child can be up all night talking to someone who lives all the way in the United Kingdom or across the country, and you have no idea who that person is, how old they are, or what they are saying. A long time ago, people who lived in like the Bible Belt weren't as corrupt as people in other states. In the other states, that they may not have had as much of a Christian atmosphere and the people in the Bible Belt had been raised up hearing the Bible, hearing preaching. And now that there's so much communication through video gaming and social media, the people in the Bible Belt are corrupt just as much. But now every place is getting worse because of the influence from quick and easy communication. The Bible says we should train up a child in the way he should go and buying them video games with violence and cussing and sexual content and letting them play online with men who are twice their age is leading your child on a path to hell fire. Matthew 7.13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. And there are many tools of Satan the devil is using to keep people on the path of destruction. Letting your kid play mindless video games is helping him blind the minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. You're actually helping the devil when you do stupid things like buying your kid a video game that has an M on the front of it. That M stands for mature. Or video games in general are making your kid get closer and closer to the devil. And that sounds stupid to a lot of people because they spend all their mind on video games and movies and bad music and they have no discernment whatsoever. Their minds are desensitized to sin. They actually think that they're good people. The closer you get to God, the more you'll realize how wicked of a person you are. And the farther away you get from God, the better you think you are. I'd like to say the video game religion also demands sacrifices. Deuteronomy 32.17 says they sacrificed unto devils, not to God, the gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. There is always a new god coming up. That's because they come out with a new game system every few years. And did you know that Christianity is the only faith where the God of that faith died for his followers? The devil demands constant sacrifice from his followers, while Jesus Christ sacrificed his own life for his followers. If you are a gamer, you probably aren't bringing goats and calves and sacrificing them to your Xbox, but you are probably sacrificing everything else. Husbands will sacrifice time with their wives and family, to play the newest Call of Duty game that comes out every couple years. And video games have played a major part in divorce. The Bible says in Mark 10 and verse 7, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, 
that shows that when you get married, you leave your father and mother. And that means being in a marriage involves growing up. The Bible also mentions something else in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I don't believe a child should play video games. But you have to admit, the whole idea at video gaming is childish. While a man sits around in his bedroom playing video games, his children aren't being trained up in the way they should go. As it says in Proverbs 22, 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Letting your kids see you play a video game for eight hours a day isn't training them up in the way they should go. You sacrificed your family to a video game console. And you also sacrifice your time. Ephesians 5.15 and 16 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Colossians 4.5 Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. The Bible says a lot about redeeming the time. It says a lot about rising up early in the morning. When you read through the Bible, notice that when one of the characters in the Bible people that were out for doing God's work, notice it says they rose up early in the morning. People will stay up all night playing video games and then sleep all day the next day and then get up and play video games all night long. And they're not getting anything done. They're wasting their life. It would be awesome if I could have all the time back that I wasted playing a video game as a kid. I sacrificed so much time to a video game console. Real life is different than video game life. A popular gamer saying is, Don't tell me to get a life because I have as many as I want. That's because on these games you can get blown up, shot in the head, drive off of a cliff, and killed in every way imaginable. And then the game goes back to the loading screen and then you're back where you started with a new life. Video games will warp the way you think about life entirely. Video gaming is a religion because it demands a lot of works. What does religion demand from a person? It demands good works. That is, you have to do certain deeds to stay in good favor with your God. For example, a Catholic must participate in the Mass and do all the sacraments. In religion, you have to achieve so many things to make it to heaven. In religion, salvation isn't a free gift. What are the works in video games? That would be the obsession with unlocking achievements. You're not a good gamer unless you unlock every achievement on the current game you're playing. You're spending all of this time working towards getting these little rewards on a screen. And this is setting your mind on the temporal things instead of eternal things. Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Matthew six nineteen and 20 says, Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. But when you're playing these video games, you're setting up treasures on earth. You're earning these achievements that are not going to matter. Back when I was a teenager and I had an Xbox 360 and I was always worried about my video getting game system getting this thing called the Red Ring of Death. If it got the Red Ring of Death, you would just have to get a new one. And that is because it is a material item and everything in this world devolves. All the material stuff you have will continue to look worse and get older. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved and then worry about laying up eternal rewards in the afterlife and not on these temporal things like video games. In our Christian life, we face giants, whether it be a besetting sin that is giving us trouble or persecution from another person. When God give us, gives us the victory over these giants, it makes us a better Christian. It makes us more of a soldier in our Christian life. And gamers will spend hours trying to get past a hard level. And there is a sense of satisfaction and achievement when they make it past a boss level in a video game. 
and that is a counterfeit of facing giants in your Christian life. Many people will spend hours and hours on a game just to get better. It's not just a game for fun anymore. It has become a sport. Some people even want to get better for bragging rights. And you're throwing your life away trying to get better at a video game. If you're a born-again Christian, then your life should be spent trying to become a better Christian. Each year, you should try to read your Bible more than you read it last year. You should try to sin less than you did the last year. But video gaming is also a, a religion of images. Exodus 20 and verse 4 shows us that God does not like image worship. And Jesus Christ is the image of God and the only image we should worship. The moment video gaming becomes your God, you show allegiance to images because you spend all your time with those images. In Christianity, we operate by faith and not by sight. Video gaming is all about sight. The better the graphics get on the game, the more people will worship the game. If you've read Numbers 33, 51 through 52, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan to the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures. Notice that, destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. God doesn't like pictures that show something sinful. And video games are moving pictures that show some of the most vile things that you can imagine. And now with inventions like the Microsoft HoloLens, you can have images seem to appear right in your face in your living room. All this virtual reality stuff and augmented reality, all this stuff could be forerunners for the image of the Antichrist. Revelation 13:15 says and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And next I would like to say video gaming is a religion of anger. Anger, rage and self-harm is commonly associated with video games. All of these things are connected with religion in the Bible. The Pharisees were angry at Jesus Christ because he was against their man-made religion. The prophets of Baal were known for cutting themselves. The devil-possessed man in Mark chapter 5 would cry and cut himself with stones. And devil-possessed men are very religious. People who play video games go into a complete rage when they lose the game. And they will do what gamers call rage quitting. Where they will get in a temper tantrum throw their controller and press the button on the video game system, possibly throw the video game system. And many times gamers will go so into the religion that they will break things around them, hurt themselves, scream cuss words. And these things, I believe, are signs of devil possession. Colossians 3 and verse 8 says, But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Those things mentioned in that verse are associated with video gaming. Games have made people mad enough to kill. If you research a lot of these uh, real-life killers and shooters, you will find that they play a lot of video games. And you're letting your kid sit in his bedroom with the door shut and play a game that you really don't know the content of that game and they're playing violent video games with cussing and fornication and watching the characters commit crimes and sell drugs killing old ladies with chainsaws and everything else what you need to do is get rid of the video games make sure you're saved make sure that you're doing what you can do to lead your kid to salvation instead of leading him further down the path of destruction. If you're not saved, I'm going to tell you how to get saved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 
So the gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day. And if you want to be saved, you need to believe that gospel. If you want to go to hell, then you need to reject that gospel. You need a savior because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, There is none righteous, no, not one. And since you're not righteous and you're a sinner, you can't make it to heaven on your own, no matter how many good things you do. The Bible says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Your good works aren't counted for righteousness. You can't get to heaven by being a good person. You have to believe on Jesus Christ, the one who died, because Jesus Christ is the only righteous man who ever lived. If you will put your faith in him, putting all your trust in what he did for you on the cross as your payment for sin, then God will save you and give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So from then on, when God looks at you, he won't see your unrighteousness. He will see the perfect righteousness of Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In Romans chapter 10 it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner, and believe on Him and what He did on the cross as your only payment for sin. But I hope you will be saved and take this serious. The Bible does talk about it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul said, flame and fire. Peter, in 2 Peter 2, 4, said he dressed up the angels and see him and cast them down to hell. James, in James chapter 3 and verse 6, said the tongue is set on fire of hell. And the book of Revelation, John said, whosoever was not found written in the book of life would be cast into the lake of fire. Jude, in the book of uh, Jude, chapter 1 and verse 7, said the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah are present tense, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, you ask us why we run buses, because there's a hell. You ask us why we support missionaries, there's a hell. You ask us why we, why we fast and we preach hard, there's a hell where people go and burn forever and ever and ever according to this book. You've never been dead and you don't know nobody who has been dead. The only other person who has an authority on it who has been dead and come back is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he told us that it's there. the damnation of hell. Mark 9, 47, you'd be better off to go to hell with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. 